Hello, we play viewers. It's been a pleasant day. Not a very long one. I'm almost hey, Paul, Paul, what are you up to? I guess it's the weekend. We don't have anything else to do. So, hi, Jen. This is what you're missing out on, unfortunately. Wish you could be here. So anyway, it's been a pleasant day. I had the sails out. I, I have three sails. And right now, oh, my cables got caught. There's two sails up there, and all three, you can see all three sails all furled up. Hi, Mindy. So I had the two, two jibs, with the jib and the stay sail out for a while this morning. And then the nice northwest wind quit. And well, the wind didn't quit, it just changed direction. And oh, you can't see it. Yeah, happy day to catch a line. It's always a happy day to catch a line. So the northwest wind became a southwest wind. And guess what direction I am headed in? Yes, you were smart. I'm headed southwest. So it's been a motor, motor boat into the breeze situation. And. Oh, well, let's see. I'm not. Did I make good time? I expected to be arriving at two, but now my speed is down considerably. Now I'm expecting to arrive at two fifteen. So I guess that's not so. You no, know, I today this this run. It's always about. It's close enough to seven hours. It's not a. It's not a killer day. I guess some people would say seven hours is a long day. No, seven hours is is not a long day, especially when it's this nice. Um, I started out with two Paul. I started out with two coats and sneakers, and now I have zero coats and and are you good with math? The sneakers are off. Here's the autopilot. Autopilot's doing its thing. I think I have a, a little allergy in the air. And here comes the. Here comes the sneeze. We've been doing a little bit of that. Yep, warmer weather. Well, of course it's warmed up as the day advanced. And then we'll, we'll thank you, Paul. It's going to cool out again, cool down again. So I'm angling in for for my entrance. And there's a fishing boat calling. Trying to avoid each other. Uh, I have to say that people in sailboats don't always pay as much attention as they should. This is Kite, go ahead. Yeah, they don't always have the radio on. So now the fishing boat's not answering. Great. So I, I left this morning and, and gone along a little ways, and then there's all this uh, all this uh, tugboat dredge dredge equipment. Hello, 63 Kimball. I saw this tugboat and bridge equipment in front of me, so I turned on my tablet, saw the name of the, the tugboat in front of me, gave them a call on the radio, and, and figured out what to do by asking, rather than just proceeding blindly and, and having a mishap. So, pays to pay a little thing, you have to pay attention. You have to see what's uh, you can see what's going around in your surroundings. So I hope the wind noise isn't too bad. I don't have any jackets on. Um, over uh, over here, no view of the shoreline. Just a whole bunch of, of little boats out fishing. Maybe not so little. One of them is probably the Cape May whale watcher. I usually don't get political in my commentary. But I was extremely disappointed with Atlantic City last night. There's a... Uh, what was the type's name? Uh, well, it's, it wasn't going anywhere, Jim. You, have, you can look it up. It was, it was before Ocean City. But it, it was just pulling. I, I don't understand what it was doing. But it, it was pulling on this, on, this, on this dredge pipe, which went to a dredge. And, and the, the, the boat told me it was, it was it was like there was stuff going into the beach. So I couldn't quite understand the situation. The tug was pulling; it wasn't going anywhere, and all this pipe was stretched out. 
Oh my goodness. Everybody's arriving at once and calling on the radio for their, for their dockage. Um, uh, Jen, I don't think it was your son's boat. I would have recognized the name. And this wasn't anywhere near Manasquan. I think his, his, his tug would have been up toward New York. This right? I wouldn't think it'd be based down by Ocean City. That's a, I mean, it sure could go down there, but that's sort of a different region for the tugs. So anyway, I'm just plugging along at a, a pitiful pace. Yeah, I know they move around some. Uh, the, the tug with our friend, board with our friend that used to be on it, was, was moving around a, a lot the other day when it was windy. So, so I think we should try to find out what their what their wind speed limit is for uh, for moving moving cargo in New York. Um, that was an odd day. The day I talked to him, I had to talk to another tug that was overtaking me. And then he turned off and stopped in Erie Basin. I've always wanted to anchor in Erie Basin. There's a, an active captain marker in there. And now the wind's picked up. What's it doing? Oh, it's just picked up from the west. Uh, I could maybe put the jib out. And it might work and it might not work. And it's starting to get cold with this new breeze. Um, I'm only 20. 26 minutes from the jetty, so it's not worth the uh, not worth the trouble. And my speed is pitiful. I, I was really hoping I'd have uh, I'd have good current today, so that's why I didn't mind getting fuel this morning. Because when I left at eight, hello from Peru. I haven't seen you for a while. I hope things are going good over in your, your neck of the woods. I hope you're okay too. Jen, I'm looking up at the uh, at the wind decks. Yeah, this is a little different. If we look back, it's kind of too late to see, but there's some kind of amusement park with roller coasters and what have you off in the distance. This is the coast of New Jersey, so of course there's going to be things for summer. And then everything kind of dies out. Uh, Jen, I was looking at the wind decks just now, and this wind just came up, so it's shifting around. And, my, and I could put the jib out and winch it in real tight, but then I'd have to stop scoping to do all that. Yeah, Wildwood. Jen, did you ever come down here with the kids for uh, for the, uh, the amusement park or whatever whatever they call it, the rides? Oh, this breeze is something else. This wasn't supposed to happen. It was supposed to calm down, but. Uh, Sometimes this happens when you get near land. There's a, uh, a shift, a shift in the in the weather. I've been there for crabs. I, I'm processing now. And I don't think you mean you've dug up crabs, crabs, but you've gone there to eat the crabs at a restaurant. You're not catching crabs. Yes. Okay. That's kind of a that's kind of a log drive just for some crabs. Can't you get them? Uh, can't you get them closer to home? How about that crab shack near your house, where you where you know the owner, where he doesn't allow boats to dock anymore, which is too bad. I think that's a good good place out of the current. So anyway, we're just poking along. My speed is 5.5 knots. It should be 6.5 or 6.4. And this morning, I'm not sure if something was a little, little off, off this morning. Uh, with with both, both jibs going, I was maybe hitting 6.6. 6. Uh, that was hard to tell. I, I started out with the big jib. Are you staying the weekend? Okay. That, that makes more sense. Cape May is a lovely place to visit. I've, I've been, if you can call it that, lucky and, and been stuck in Cape May, the storms, and gone into the, uh, one of the, into the cheap marina, and, and there was a lot of wind but no rain, so I could bicycle around and see, see a lot of Cape May, and the beautiful part of Cape May isn't Cape May, it's western Cape May, 
which has uh, a few farms and the train track and, and just like uh, oh, the lighthouse uh, let me think let me think Jen did you ever go and get uh, Cape May diamonds on the beach that's a fam there's a famous spot there where you can pick them up and uh, if anybody knew about Cape May diamonds you would I learned about that thanks to geocaching it took me to that so one, one time I was stuck I was stuck there for, for several days of wind and went around getting geocaches at, at distant spots uh, now you both know about them and uh, I had a funny thing happen this morning Jen this applies to you as I was getting ready to leave the dock to go to the fuel dock this little boat came in with two older guys and, and they're trying up to go have some pancakes and they're both from, from nearby so we're having a little chat and they said so you have to do a poll now and they said you're, you're from around here certainly you've heard about hamburger pizza of course they've heard about hamburger pizza they said there's, I have this friend who's from around here too who's never heard of hamburger pizza so that's, that's two data points. I think you've let a shelter life yet. I don't know why you wouldn't know about that. <laughs> Boy, let me look up. Oh, no. See, now, now, now Jen, the, uh, the wind has just gone wrong for having the jib out. It's gone more south. Uh, so, I don't quite understand this. I have a, at the top of the mast, there's a device called a Windex, which is a, a it's like a, a weather vane, and below it is, on each side of the boat, on metal, metal wires, there are these tabs that stick out, so you can look up, and you can see where the pointer is for the wind, and how it lines up with the tabs. I had to bend my, my wires for those tabs a considerable distance. So when the when the pointer is is inside the tabs, it's no good for sailing. The wind's too close to the front of the boat. And when the pointer is pointing outside of the tabs, then you can put the sail out and, and it'll catch the breeze and off you go. But they sell these windexes with the tabs so close to each other. I, I, it, 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 well, girl, what, what's the point? I don't understand. It, it wouldn't even work probably for a racing boat. I mean. Sure, you can see the tabs are there, but, but they don't tell you anything. How am I doing? 5.3 knots with this breeze that sprung up. So my friend, uh, my friend Jen, who, who went past your house on the inside, he likes to do the inside of his motorboat, tried to go out today and turned around too rough. And even, it had, even, even if it hadn't been too rough this morning, you know, at this point, it would be too rough. So. So he came back and, and anchored in Cape Bay Harbor and I might see him again. Uh, where I was anchored two, two spots previously, there were three other boats with me and the motorboat farthest away left really early. Well, come to find out that was my friend. He always gets an early start. And he'd seen my boat but didn't realize who he was looking at. So <laughs> it was kind of funny. Because we were far away, I wouldn't have, you know, I, I just saw that there was a boat in the distance. And he could see that my boat, my boat has a very distinct uh, appearance. So, if he was a little more astute, he would have realized what he was looking at. But also, he wasn't expecting to see me. So now we've, we've seen each other in New York. Uh, we've seen each other in quite a few states. He doesn't hold the record, though. I have another friend who would keep his boat at Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And one time he came out to Star Island on a weekend. And or maybe it was a weekday, I forget. And, uh, and he, he and his friend wanted to go to shore, so I went and, and picked him up in our launch. I'm a launch operator. And picked him up. So so I've seen him in New Hampshire and Maine. We did New Hampshire and Maine at the same time, within, within a minute of each other. So I've seen, I've seen this other friend in, in multiple states as well. 
and uh, I think Neil holds the record and, and Roger's in second place. So the wind let down a little bit, current's pushing me. So the I, what I was saying is, is I hope to time my arrival with an incoming current. But no, low tide's at 3.30 and I'm almost there. So I'll have the last of the ebb. And all of Delaware Bay is pouring out, not too far in front of me. And I'm not sure which direction the current goes, but given, given my pitiful speed, I think it's going against me. I don't know why you're saying that. Why don't you say that? Here's a view to the back. We can take a little view out to the back. There's an outboard motor, which, which I fixed up this, this spring. And replaced the impeller and replaced the fuel tank got it to go but I hardly ever use it. I don't have any gas. I, I don't know if I'll even put my dinghy in. For those of you to the back, not much happening there. This is most of my, most of the parts of my wind vane, my self-steering wind vane that doesn't need any electricity. The only part that's missing is, is this part on the top. That's a piece of wood that you clamp on when you actually want to use it. But while I'm motoring, the autopilot the electric auto autopilot is doing the work. So here's the uh, here's the control for it. It does a pretty good job even when it's rough. But that's not what you wanted to see, probably. I, I see those things all the time, so they're fairly routine. In a few moments, I'm going to run out of uh, things to show you. Get near the jetty. There's my Massachusetts accent, getting near the jetty. Let's see, a little, little bit left. 14 minutes to the jetty. One, two, three, four. Look at our course. Maybe five. That's an interesting, uh, interesting shift in, in direction. So there are funny currents here. Just don't know. I've had... Uh, I had kind of a strange, a strange event happen earlier. I was sitting, so normally I don't stand up, but I'm out in the ocean. I'm sitting down, looking at this. This is the radar. So you see on the right is land, and there's a target off to the left at about 45 degrees. And I don't see any other targets in front of me. So there is another one, it popped up. So there's a target in front of me and one way off to the left. So if there's one in front, then I'll, I'll be sitting here and I'll duck over. Say, oh, is he nearby or not? So the one off to the left is over there somewhere. A little speck on the horizon, about uh, a mile away. It's a real pain in the ass to stand up for seven hours. Um, and if you're sitting down on this boat, you can't see you can't see through all this. It's too, the seat's too low for the, the height of the deck. So the only choice is either stand or sit and watch the radar. Um, I can't sit and watch the radar when it's a, I'm in a narrow place, which is the case once I get, uh, once I get farther south and I'm doing the inside though. So once I get up to the jetties, I'm going to have to scope out, and maybe I will before then because we look, <laughs> we're only going to see some beach from now on. We're losing the, uh, we're losing the view. That's my course. Still running a bit high. A little bit more to the left. I believe in going in the shortest distance as possible, not not going out to see any more than necessary. So I'm heading right for the tip of the jetties. Over, over the years I've built up a big collection of, of waypoints. And I always have my, my little GPS, <coughs> my little GPS is, is on, sending me to a waypoint. There's a few exceptions to that rule. Um, I mean, when I'm doing these long stretches, if I'm obviously in a narrow place, there's no waypoint. And when I go down the top end of New Jersey, the waypoint's for my destination, but I have to allow for the bulge to the state. So just you know, use some sense and don't run into the beach.
So you guys are kind of quiet, no questions. Thanks for the brown heart. I know that was an accident, but thanks anyway. Uh, once I get settled, oh, I hope this wind dies out today. It's supposed to die out tonight. The trouble of Cape May Harbor is the current pours in and out. And if you have the current one way and the wind another, then your boat goes all over the place because the wind pushes you, the current pushes you, and, and you don't settle down. So if, <laughs> if I get a chance, just joining in, hello, Louise. I was also thinking of scoping later today, once I'm anchored. And then you can see my, my spot. The harbor is fairly uh, long, but it's kind of narrow. So there's things, there's things to see. Uh, there's uh, also the Coast Guard has their, uh, their training facilities. So all, all people who have just joined the Coast Guard have to report here for their for their training. So if it's if the wind is right or if it's fairly calm, you'll hear the various squads of the, 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 the young people out doing their drills, uh, running running in formation, and, and whoever's in charge makes them sing out one two three yes sir four five six yes sir that kind of thing. And then of course at night there's is the played music on the speaker taps and in the morning same thing to, to wake you up so this is kind of a funny experience off in the distance is a water tower barely barely seen that's around where the coast guard station is so i'm coming up on the jetties i don't think you just want to look at some boring sandy beach i'm going to be there in eight minutes so i'm going to scope out and hopefully catch you later from inside the harbor. Thank you everybody for, for riding along with me for a little bit. And we'll keep you, uh, <laughs> see you, see you in a little while. Take care.